So, um, hello everyone. Thanks for, for joining the talk. Uh, my name is Andre. I am a PhD student uh, at the University of Grenoble Alps, also uh, in a partnership with uh, RIAX Technologies. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, scheduling policies for serverless-based um, edge cloud continuum. More specifically, we, I will start with a container layer aware scheduling policy and then some new progress that we have made with a, a few other objectives. Um, so this project is also funded by the MIAE project and the physics project, a European project. And uh, talking um, about physics, it's, um, the goal is to provide a visual program environment to create serverless workflows. Um, and we had uh, other two talks uh, here at DevConf. One was yesterday, we had uh, this uh, workshop, and tomorrow Yanis is going to present this other one, so if you are interested, uh, please join it. And so, uh, to start, I will define a few concepts, um, and then the edge cloud continue. For us, we understand the edge cloud continue as this infrastructure composed of several different layers called the cloud, uh, cloud clusters, ad clusters, or ad resource. On cloud clusters, we have the global continuum layer where we have several different clusters. And in the local level, we have the edge clusters or fog and the edge, edge resource. So the idea here is that we come from this big view of the clusters and go to the local ones. And of course, on the clusters we have the big machines that are, have more power resource. And then as far as we go to the edge, we go to, to less resource and, uh, and more mobile, uh, mobile machines. Um, when we talk about serverless, um, to define serverless, I would like to do the transition of the, from the cloud to the, to the serverless. And so, uh, when we have cloud platforms in general, we have uh, this generic scenario here where we have uh, developers that need to develop big applications and deal with all the settings of the platform and then put the pla uh, their applications to run there. And this, um, this application will stay there, let's say, forever, I mean, it continues there. And uh, the, the, the user will pay um, by the machine hosting time. So as far as it's there, uh, it will pay for that. When we go to the serverless, we have two main points. The first one is that we will split this view of the, um, of the scenario. And now the user, the final user, which can be a data scientist, a developer, and so on, we will just see this part of the, the scenario. So we split in half, and now uh, the developer just needs to deal with functions which are much smaller pieces of code instead of whole applications, just small functions, and just a few settings. Let's say amount of CPU, amount of memory. And the second point, the, the main point of serverless, oh, sorry. Okay, and the second main point is that the other part will be uh, fully managed by the platform providers. So the platform provider needs to offer and to deliver everything about the, the platform. So scalability, um, uh, provisioning of machines, and so on. So the user will just deploy their functions and the platform will provide everything that is needed to, to, to run uh, those functions. And then in the end, the, the final user will just be targeted by function execution time. And these functions are not staying there as, uh, as before. Now we are talking about stateless functions and functions that will be triggered by, by events. So they are, uh, these functions will going to be executed just when needed. So one function is triggered, it's deployed on the platform, and then it's executed. And then um, with the scheduling policies here, we want to reduce, uh, we want to work on a few objectives, and uh, which can be cost, can be energy, or time. 
So today I'm going to talk a bit about these three objectives. Uh, the first part of this presentation, uh, I'm going to show a few results of this paper that we just published at CC Grid on May of this year. So if you are interested, here are the QR code for our repository with all the reproducible artifacts. So the paper is completely reproducible. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, please check. And um, I'm going to start with that, and then in the end to present a new, a new step, uh, our recent uh, progress. So, uh, as I was talking about serverless computing, here are a few main points that we, we focus it when working on, on this first step. First, um, when we talk about serverless, for us, we talk a, a lot about containers. So here we are talking about functions that are deployed inside and executed inside containers. These containers deployment are not negligible. So through our studies and a few other uh, papers, we understood that the time to deploy containers uh, sometimes take longer than the function execution by itself. Because on serverless, we are talking about fast execution functions. So we are talking about minutes. And sometimes containers can take longer than that if we are uh, downloading the container from a, a far, uh, let's say, cloud, and etc. But we can share the layers of the containers. So in this first project, the idea is to share the, 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 container, the, the, la the container layers even if you are not talking about the same containers. So here uh, we have the infrastructure of the Ad Cloud Continuum that I presented and our uh, motivation. So we want to reduce the amount of data downloaded to deploy the containers and also the amount of data downloaded to upload and download functions, input and output. So in this scenario, we can say that functions are triggered from the edge, are deployed here on the local level, but the containers come from the cloud. So we want to reduce the amount of data uh, managed on, on both uh, directions. And uh, when we talk about the containers, we want to, to reduce the, the total amount of uh, download. How we do that? We proposed a function orchestration algorithm, so we called it FOA, that the, it's based on a linear program that will optimize the amount of data downloaded respecting a constraint of make spam. So the idea of this linear program is that we optimize the entire replacement of the functions on the platforms respecting a constraint of make spam, and if we are not happy with the output of this linear program in terms of make spam, then we are going to run this loop in here, going to from the output of the second step and coming back to the linear program, uh, reducing our uh, restriction of make spam. So let's say we optimized the whole uh, container's placement, but still it uh, outputs an, uh, uh, a solution that will take hours to be executed. So then we take this output, we say, no, I want this in half, this, this make spam, uh, in, in cut it in half, and try to compute a new solution. And then we go uh, on and on as far as we are satisfied with the solution. Then we will have, uh, here we arrive at step three, when we would, will optimize the, the download of the layers. And then we will have the final uh, schedule output. Uh, a few reference for the, um, the linear program and the minimal cost integration. It's based on a dual approximation algorithm of uh, Shmois and Tardosh. He's the, he's the paper here. Uh, and our experimental protocol. We are doing it uh, through simulations. And to do that, first, we adapted a, a functions on a benchmark called the function bench. We deployed a, a serverless platform called OpenWhisk on top of an academical cluster called Grid5000 uh, in France. 
and uh, with that we measured and calibrated the results. So we run there the, this benchmark for a while, uh, calibrated how long each function takes, and then we could build our workloads for our simulations. Why? Because we are running a linear program, so it's an offline approach. So we need to know every information in advance. Uh, to evaluate the, um, our scheduling policies, we have this uh, simulated environment on top of Batsyn and Singridge, which are a combination of a bad scheduling simulator. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, everything is open source and available. Our design of experiments. We varied sizes of workload, size of platforms, heterogeneity level. Here, we also investigate the heterogeneity of the platforms by changing the CPU speed. Right now, we are talking about light levels of heterogeneity by changing the CPU speed of the machines. So when I say that we have different levels of heterogeneity, it means different clusters, uh, the number of different clusters that have the same CPU machine. Uh, we varied our two scheduling policies, FOA and Kubernetes image locality. We try to reproduce uh, Kubernetes image locality policy, which uh, is basically a, um, a first come first serve uh, approach taking into account the image, uh, uh, the, the container image. So Kubernetes will check if on the platform we already have the container deployed in, uh, in some machine, and if uh, it is there, it will use the same node. But it just looks for the entire containers. Here is our novelty that we want to check also the layers of the containers, not on entire containers. Uh, here is the table of all the functions that we adapted from Function Bench uh, and the different input values that we use. So we have functions like mathematical functions like chameleon float operation, link pack, matrix multiplication, and also another functions like image processing, video processing, and, and so on. Here is the simulated infrastructure of uh, Batsyn and Singrid. So the idea is that Batsyn will run the simulation on the first big uh, square, and then uh, Singrid will perform um, the simulation on the, the, the real infrastructure. So they, they communicate to that. And we needed to add a few layers on top of uh, these tools to perform like a serverless platform. So we added um, an extra layer here on the profiles of the workloads of uh, Batsyn to use container layers. And um, yeah. So here, uh, to show a, a few uh, open source contributions that we did on the project here are the, the function bench, here is the function bench repository um, with our functions already mer merged that there. And then uh, we go to our experimental results. The figures that I'm going to show now will follow the um, will follow this uh, this structure by the small facets here, the small squares. We combine workload size, platform size, and with the x. X here, we are showing the make spawn, and on the IX, we are showing the amount of data downloaded. So what we have on this figure are the Pareto curves, where we investigated the trade-off between reducing the amount of data download and the make spawn. What does it mean? It means that we cannot reduce both at the same time in an optimal way. So if you want to reduce more make spawn, okay, we need to relax a bit on amount of data downloaded. If you want to optimize amount of data downloaded, we need to relax a bit the make spawn. And here, with the colors, uh, we are showing the repetitions of our algorithm that I illustrated in the first step. So the idea is that all the first solutions are here on the extreme right, with the best cost, um, with the best cost, so at, with the minimum cost, but with big make spawn. 
So as I mentioned, if we are not satisfied with the mixed bar, we constrain it in half, and then we go to step two and uh, re-perform the algorithm. So we can see that we reduce the mixed bar, but increase a bit the amount of data downloaded. And then we go on and go on and go on, and then the last iterations show the best mixed bar, but the worst amount of data downloaded. So what we conclude here is in all scenarios, about three or four repetitions are enough for us. We don't uh, go to the last one because we, we will lose in terms of, uh, of amount of data download. In, and then now I'm going to show the specific objectives that we, we had. So here I'm comparing, again, with the same structure of combining workload and platform size, but now in the x axis I'm showing the heterogeneous level of the platforms, and in the i axis I'm showing the amount of data downloaded. So here we are seeing the difference between our approach, FOA, and uh, our baseline in terms of amount of data downloaded. And what we can see is that FOA outperforms image locality in uh, almost uh, two levels of magnitude uh, in terms of this objective. So yes, FOA can do much better because uh, Kubernetes image locality actually has this uh, grid approach and we uh, are focused on, on reduce this amount of data downloading. What we can see also with the different combinations of size is that when we have very loaded uh, platforms, we don't have too much choice because if we have, uh, for example, here we have 10 functions per machine, uh, so we have a lot of functions, small platforms, we don't have too much options to say, okay, I want these functions to go here or there. But when we have, um, a lot of options for uh, the uh, can behave much better. And the, um, the next result is the number of machines used. Here, it was not one of the objectives. Again, the objective was to reduce makes per an amount of data downloaded. And in the end, analyzing the results, we just check that we did this optimization at the same time that we used less machines. So in terms of serverless, uh, com uh, in serverless computing, where you pay for uh, as far as you use, it's a much uh, ver very good uh, result. So we use less machines and optimize both parameters. Um, yeah. So the conclusions at this part is that grid algorithms may not profit from, from the heterogeneity. Yeah, sorry, I, I forgot to mention that. We can see that the, um, as far as we change the heterogeneity of the platforms, the grid algorithm does not, um, does not change the behavior. While we can see that FOA uh, can, uh, can adapt a, a bit better. So they not may profit from, from heterogeneity. FOA has outperformed the, the baseline in terms of data transfers makes spa in addition to system optimization, which means uh, the number of machines used by up to two orders of magnitude. And FOA then minimizes code start delays. So if we minimize the amount of data downloaded, it means that we are reusing more and more container layers. So we minimize, we optimize code start delays and it speed up function execution. So if we don't spend too much time deploying containers, we start the functions as soon as possible. However, at this step, FOA is still very time consuming because it's based on a linear program which has many variables and it performs in order of minutes while uh, our baseline perform in order of seconds. So this is the biggest uh, trade-off of our, our approach. And so this is one of the main points that we worked on this next step that I'm going to, to present now. So the point now is um, this was the, uh, the motivation and let's say the objective of the first part. We want to continue with the good results. We want to improve it for in terms of uh, performance. And we 
added one more objective to this multi-objective approach. We want also to reduce the energy consumption of the platform. So now uh, we do that by splitting our scheduling policy in two phases. So now we are talking about a two level of scheduling policies. One that we run on the global continuum. So at this step, we are going to decide in which cluster each function is going to run. And then at the local level, we will decide in which machine inside such a cluster this, machine, uh, this function will run. Uh, so we do that by um, reducing at the global level the energy consumption and the function execution time. And at the local level, we are going to use our uh, layers aware uh, scheduling policy to optimize it. At first, since we are going to work with energy consumption, we have started to um, trying to, to, to use the Kepler. So we are in touch with the community and uh, the work is in progress to, to, um, to be able to use it. And um, I'm going to show a bit how we, these investigations in terms of energy consumption. Since we do not have yet uh, something to run on our Kubernetes platforms yet, we are uh, using uh, power watt meters on uh, direct on, on machines to analyze the energy consumption at the first step. Again, to model our workloads, to prepare the inputs for our, near lin uh, our new linear program. So the first step is to analyze the energy consumption. Here we have uh, um, an instance with three nodes uh, with OpenWhisk running on it. And we have the, the first node is the master and we have two workers, but just the, the third work was used. And so we can see that the two, two nodes that are, let's say, idle are still very uh, energy consuming. But here we can see that uh, the functions are running and then if we cut this and zoom it, we have this figure on the right. So here I'm analyzing the energy consumption, not the energy consumption yet, sorry, the instant power per time uh, for different kind of functions. And then with that, we computed the energy consumption by computing the integral of this area. Before that, even if we zoom a little bit more on a few functions, we can see the behaviors of the functions. So we can see uh, uh, here our first investigation point that, for example, we have a few spikes at the beginning of each execution. And these spikes may come from the containers uh, deployment. So the preparation of the, the environment to execute the function may take, may consume a few more of uh, energy and then we execute the functions. Here I'm uh, showing different input sizes for the same function. So Limpack on left and uh, Chameleon on the right. Uh, okay, so once we have it, we computed the energy consumption. Then we remodel our workloads and we came back to the same steps that are the same environment setup that I showed previously. So we executed everything on top of OpenWhisk and Grid 5000, uh, model our workloads, and then we perform the simulations with the new algorithm. So it's still a linear program. We still do the repetitions to optimize the make spa as far as we are not satisfied with the, the final make spa of the solution. And now I'm going to show a few results. So the same structure for the, the, the plots with the combinations of workload size and platform size. We can see that first, uh, we still do much better in terms of amount of data downloaded. Here now, I'm, uh, our baseline is not anymore like Kubernetes image locality, but because now we are talking about two levels of scheduling policy. So our baseline also has two levels of scheduling policy. So now we implemented a first come first server uh, at the global level and then uh, cache lo image locality on local level. So um, the same, we are optimizing a lot in terms of uh, uh, amount of data downloaded. Um, in scenarios that are not that loaded, 
we don't have a big difference, but when we can do, when we can save uh, resources and uh, improve these objectives, we can do, uh, we can do that. Number of machine used, the same. We also reduce the number of machine used. Uh, as a grid algorithm, our baselines tend to use all the machines available, uh, but we not. And the most uh, important part right now is the energy consumption. So uh, with our preliminary experiments in this direction, we already have uh, good results showing that we can reduce uh, the energy consumption in the median, like half in the median, in all the scenarios. Um, and we, we are going to, to continue uh, on that. So the conclusions for the second part is still, uh, the grid algorithm may not follow the difference of the heterogeneity of our platform while FOA uh, does. The new FOA, FOA E, outperforms the baseline for data transfer and energy consumption, in addition to yet uh, reduce the system utilization, but now we lost in terms of make span. So now we are not uh, um, doing better than the baseline in terms of make span yet, so this is uh, uh, um, the one of the directions that we are going to work on. Again, we minimize uh, code start delays by minimizing the amount of data downloaded. And now the very good news is that FOA performs in terms of seconds and not anymore in terms of minutes. So this is, it, it was one of the goals of uh, between our two steps because now we can uh, say that FOA is reasonable to run on, on, uh, on main products or on, on Kubernetes. So future work. Sorry, to continue improve FOA's model and try also other linear uh, solvers. To study applications that can be modeled as workflows, because right now we are talking about stateless functions, uh, we are talking about batches of stateless functions. We want to include uh, Kepler for a continuous measurement of the energy consumption. So if we can continuously measure the energy consumption of the platform, maybe we can turn from an offline approach to an on online approach. And to continue this investigation towards the reduction of the energy consumption, as I showed, the platform uh, by itself, it's also energy consuming, and we did not take that into account yet in our model. We are just optimizing the functions. So optimizing also uh, the, the platform may be one of the directions. And we are working on the real implementation on Kubernetes for both of our scheduling policies. Image locality is already in progress to, we already scheduled talks on the community of Kubernetes to, to put it on the, on the main branch of uh, Kubernetes. And um, FOA is in, uh, is in on, on development. So thank you very much. Again, this is the, the reference for the, for, uh, the, the paper that we published for the first part. Please scan the QR code if you are interested. And then on my GitHub repository, you can also find the, the results for these new steps that I presented today. Thank you very much, and I will be ha uh, happy to answer if you have any questions.